everyone knows about them, mostly because of their poisonous stings and long tentacles, jellyfish. But what most people don't know is that they are causing power outages all over the world. Why and how jellyfish are shutting down power plants will be the topic of this video. In order to understand this problem we have to know two things. First of all, how do power plants actually work? And secondly, why jellyfish? What makes jellyfish so special? We'll start by looking closer at jellyfish. Jellyfish are 95% water and only the remaining 5% contain the barest essentials they need to capture, consume and use energy. And barest essentials means that jellyfish don't have a brain and neither a heart, bones or even blood. So you could say they combine plant-like simplicity, an animal-like mobility and an almost bacterial ability to reproduce rapidly under favorable conditions. But that's not even a problem for them. The lack of complex physical features makes jellyfish extremely adaptable and the things that restrict other marine animals such as temperature, acidity, salinity, light or even darkness don't face them. And that leads us to one of the main problems. In 2012, the International Journal of Aquatic Science analyzed that 45 out of the world's 66 largest marine ecosystems have an abundance of jellyfish. The researchers estimated that 62% of them still had increasing trends. Still, it's hard to find concrete numbers of jellyfish because they are notoriously difficult to study as they are blooming unexpectedly in inaccessible corners of the sea. But we know one thing, in most of the world's oceans there is an overpopulation of jellyfish. But why is there an overpopulation? The predators of the jellyfish are seabirds, sea turtles, marine mammals and fish, especially tuna and swordfish. But in the last 60 years tuna fish became more and more popular as food around the world. Today tuna is clearly overfished and hence one main predator of the jellyfish is no longer around. The same is currently starting to happen with the swordfish. Another reason for the overpopulation is a result of climate change. Higher ocean temperatures mean that reproductive conditions that formerly occurred only every few decades now occur more frequently. And then there's an issue of oxygen. Heavy rain causes agricultural nutrients to seep into the soil and from there it runs all the way into the ocean. Those high concentrations of agricultural nutrients cause plankton to grow explosively. This in turn depletes some area of the ocean of oxygen creating so-called dead zones. Most marine life can survive in an oxygen-deprived environment, except for jellyfish. Bloodless and brainless jellyfish are able to exist with very little oxygen. Far from inhospitable, dead zones become competition-free plankton buffets for jellyfish. Now there's only one question left. How is an overpopulation of jellyfish connected with power plants? Therefore, let's have a closer look on how power plants work. Power plants produce heat by burning a fuel like coal from nuclear reactions or directly from the sun or geothermal heat sources underground. The resulting heat is used to boil cold water to create steam. This steam will then spin a turbine. And in the end, the spinning motion will be transformed to electricity. Once steam has passed through a turbine, it must be cooled back into water before it can be reused to produce more electricity. So, how do jellyfish shut power plants down? 
When a power plant takes the cooling water from an ocean, it's crucial that no other objects from the ocean get pumped in with it. Therefore, there's a huge filter that protects the incoming water from the ocean. But large blooms of jellyfish clog this filter and thereby the power plant cannot get new cooling water from the ocean. As a result, the production of electricity stops because there's no steam that could spin the turbine. And subsequently, the power plant has to be shut down. And that's exactly what happened to cause several blackouts in the last 15 years all over the world. The biggest incidents were 2008 in the USA and California, 2011 in Scotland, 2013 in Sweden, 2017 in Israel and 2011 in Japan. But how can we solve this problem? In recent years Japan has been living this jellyfish saturated vision of the future. Six feet wide and packing a brutal sting, the jellies clogged fishing nets, devastated fish populations both in farms and in the wild and even caused the trawler to capsize. Early in the 21st century, blooms of massive Nomura's jellyfish suddenly began occurring annually, whereas they used to only happen once every 40 years. So Japanese scientists and entrepreneurs scrambled for solutions. Killing the jellies was out of the question, because the jellies would then release eggs, which in turn could create new spawning areas. Jellies are edible, but not really tasty. Medical uses have yet to be found. As a last resort, they could theoretically be reconstituted to fertilizer. <laughs>